May the words of my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. So we just heard a beautiful passage from the Gospel of John, which begins and ends with love. Now, the church calendar and the secular calendar do not usually intersect, except maybe today. We are lucky that on this Mother's Day, we have the intersection of love from the Gospel of John, and we celebrate the love of mothers. Mothers' love and care and compassion for their children, grandchildren, and others. And for some, Mother's Day has been expanded to include motherly nature, people that care for us. I know it's not a Hallmark thing, but teachers and nurses. I think we just celebrated this week, Nurses Week. We celebrate teachers all the time. We should celebrate mothers all the time, too. But people that care for us and show compassion. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a biological relationship. For some people, Mother's Day can be complicated and difficult. Not everyone is blessed with a mother who provided safe and loving and nurturing and compassionate home. We, we've had the privilege of having Rob Shear with us, who's talked about his foster care journey. So I don't need to go into that. We already know from his experience and from others that not every relationship with a mother is what we would like to think of an ideal Hallmark card or American greetings. Don't let Hallmark start getting me up, you know, <laughs> suing me. And in some cases, Mother's Day can be painful because some women have not been able to bear children or some women have lost children and find themselves outliving their children, which is never an easy thing for anyone. And some mothers have experienced that heartbreak of, like I just said, losing children, or some daughters, several of us in this room at the moment are experiencing the declining health of our mothers and the need to provide continuing support and care. I speak from personal experience, as many of you know, my mother's 92, she had a fall in March, she's now in permanent health care, which is fine because she's very bright and knows exactly what she wants me to pick up from her cottage which she has now decided to release. So it is the grieving of the home that she and my father lived in since 2005 that my sisters and I are having to clean out. But she said yesterday as we were celebrating Mother's Day with her in the midst of all the chaos of cleaning out her cottage, the mother has become the child. And I know that sometimes feels like that for those of you who have dealt with people who have aged and you're caring for them. But let the children get this straight. We are not the parent. We are not the parent. We may have to actually parent, but we are also in this all together. And I'm grateful that um, we have mothers and daughters among us that are trying to show that love no matter what. I'm interested in the fact that love is something we just sang about. I didn't put this together until we just sang this song. But for those of us who, how many of you have read Braiding Sweetgrass? Many of you have, and some of us are. If you haven't read it, um, this is the book we're reading on Tuesdays. It is an amazing book, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead in my sermon, but the author is both a botanist, ecologist, a Native American, and a poet. And her writing is phenomenal. And she writes from the perspective of a Native American who has heard the stories of creation, which are different but connected to what we would consider, excuse me, in the Holy Scripture. But this song that we just sung is from the Dakota Indian chant. If you look at the bottom of the song in your, prayer, in your hymnal, this is a Dakota Indian chant with a Native American melody. And I almost want to sing it again, because as I was singing it, I was picturing a retreat I took years ago along the Arkansas River at Camp Mitchell, which is the Episcopal Retreat Center on top of Petty Jean Mountain. And it was a women's retreat, and we had a woman who was a Native American teaching us about Mother Earth. 
And as we sang this song, I was thinking to myself about that time years ago where we all took our shoes off and we walked in a sacred circle singing Native American chants. And the reason I'm calling back this braiding sweetgrass is that everything we do, and I'd like to think everything we have done here at St. Nick's, relates to our love of God and creation and Jesus the one who teaches us about love. You see that when St. Nick's was built, it was an intention, when it was founded, and it was an intention to take care of God's creation. And when we built this campus, we put in a lot of things that were really important to God's creation. A green septic system, recycled materials for our bathrooms. We have a wonderful garden that feeds the community, and bees that are helping to pollinate the blossoms from the garden, but also helping to thrive in the community with honey and other such na natural things. We don't use any more styrofoam or disposable products. We try not to use water bottles. We have to try in our worship life and in our community to take care of Mother Earth and God's creation. Because that's what love is about. Love is a decision. I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago. Love is a decision to act with care and compassion to include all of God's family, not just human family, but also all of God's creatures. Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not abandon you. I will send to you the advocate. Now, when scripture was translated from the Greek, it turns out that um, the advocate word, or the word in Greek for advocate is a gender neutral word and some scribes and translators created the spirit. They wrote about the spirit in their own likeness, which means the spirit turned into he. But some of us in our own worship think about the, tr the Trinity with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit as either she or they or it. It seems a little bit less personal. Right? But if we consider broadening our minds to God's abundant and all inclusive love and acceptance of all creation, as we say in the Episcopal tradition, it is meet and right to refer to the Spirit as she. So I'm going to share a little bit of the passage that Sandra just read with a little bit of a nuance referring to she and hear it in a different way. Jesus said, I will send the advocate to you. And this is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither knows her nor sees her. We know her because she abides with us, and she will be in you. It's a little different, isn't it? Especially on this maternal feast day in the secular world. And then thinking about that all-inclusive love that we know God showers upon us. God wants us to abide in God's love. Now, abide doesn't just mean remain or stay. It's, it's a more of a connection, a, a relationship that is reciprocal, if you will. And Jesus says it's like, in other passages, it's like the vine and the branch. They need one another in order to thrive. It's kind of like grafting. Grafting, you know, when you put something together that doesn't necessarily normally go together, although we do know that we normally belong to God. But it's a reciprocal relationship. And that's what the human family, the family of the kingdom of God should be like. If I'm hurting, hopefully somebody will help raise me up. And if you're hurting or you need something, somebody will come to your aid as well. We are all connected, not just humanity, but the whole creation is connected. Again, in Braiding Sweetgrass, this concept of reciprocity, mutual thriving, is critical to our, to our world. She says, this is Robin um, Kimmerer, who is the author, she says, trees act not as individuals, but somehow as a collective. She's talking about, about pecan groves, that we don't know exactly how they do this, she says. At least we don't know yet.
But we see that power of unity. What happens to one happens to all. We can starve together or we can feast together. So vine and branches, trees, she's saying, have reciprocal relationships with one another. And working together in unity, they survive and they thrive. And we have a lot to learn from trees and from nature, don't we? If they work together, why can't we work together? Why can't we uphold one another in love and make sure that every person feels seen and heard and has the best possible opportunities in life? Instead of taking away opportunities for people, our kingdom of God on earth should be about lifting people up, about helping people be the best that they can be, not telling them that they're not worth something, telling them that they aren't allowed to do something. But we need to shine our light and love and work together in that reciprocal relationship of vine and branches to be able to lift one another up. And one last thought. I want to ask the question for all of us. How many of you feel like you've ever been orphaned or you are all on your own? A few of us have in our lives at some point or another might have felt that that isolation. But Jesus tells us, I will never leave you orphaned. And in Peter, Peter says, let us remind ourselves of our baptism. I know I come back to it on, off all the time because that is our covenant that God has made with us, that we are beloved children of God. And in our baptismal covenant and in the prayer God has adopted us into the household of God. We are never, ever, ever alone. Even in the midst of the most isolated feelings, God is with us. Jesus is living testament to our not being alone. Sometimes it's hard to see that. It's hard to recognize that we have a friend. We have a, a leader. We have a shepherd. We have someone who knows our pain, has felt that abandonment, but God and Jesus is always with us. We are adopted into the household of God. When you're outside in the air and you see the trees, we're connected to all of creation because God has connected us and said we are good. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for us who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you in all things and above, and above all things and in all of creation, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.